Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel Programming Knowledge. In today's video, we are going to take a deeper look into some of the functionality of the Microsoft Excel. So in today's Microsoft Excel tutorials video, we will be looking at some of the steps which will help you in organizing your data and maintaining a good record whenever you create any kind of a worksheet for yourself in Microsoft Excel. First of all, uh, in front of your computer screens, you can see that uh, I have a table whom I have uh, named as data and these are these six columns that it is containing. These columns are order date, name, item, units, units cost and total. So the reason I have chosen this kind of data is because I have got the different kinds of data that I required for this particular tutorial into this video. This table that I have created is being created by taking up the data from the internet. So if you want, you can just go to Google and search for any data that you require and you will be able to download a sample data for yourself. Uh, whatever data you want, you can just enter into the sheet or if you want, you can just go to Google and download any sample database for yourself. So now I have adjusted this uh, data to look like this and whatever the steps I have followed are the basic steps that were covered in the first video of Excel tutorials. So you can also follow the same steps and organize your data like this. Now first of all we are going to look that what types of data are available in Microsoft Excel and how can we access them. So in this table, as you can see that we have different kinds of data. First of all is the order date, which is the date on which the order was placed. The second is the name of the person, which is another type of data. Then is the name of the item. Now the data type of the name of the person and the name of the item can be same. Then we have units, which is generally a numerical value. Then we have the cost of the units and the total. So the cost and total are going to be currency values. Now to organize this data into the different data types, we have got the different data types in Microsoft Excel. Now what we can do is suppose we want to apply the data to units cost. So what we're going to do is just click on this H and whole of this column will be selected. Then into the home tab, you will find something called general just right click over this arrow and here you will find currency so when you click on this currency you will see that the units cost has been changed into a currency with a dollar symbol preceding all the values now this is exactly what it tells us that this is a kind of a currency the same thing you can just do with the total as well just apply currency to it as the units are concerned, so the units will not be a type of currency. So what will we do is just select its whole column, then go to general and here there is another data type called number. So when you just click on it, you can see that dot zero zero has been added after all the values of the units. And that's exactly what tells us that it is not a single text, it is a number. Now the other data type is date. So we can just select its whole column, uh, right click over here and here you will find an option of short date. So you can just click on it and you will now see that it has been organized into a format uh, where the month is written first and then the date and then the year in YY, YY format, which is the standard format. So that's how our data is organized as well. So these are the different types of the data that are available in Microsoft Excel. And if you want, you can just simply access them very easily. Now, for example, uh, you have this data and you want to know that which item is the priciest or which item is the most expensive and which one is the least expensive. So what you can do is just select this unit's cost and you can apply formatting to it. Now this formatting is of different types and since we are applying some conditions to it, so that is the reason why this formatting is known as conditional formatting. 
So for that you can just select this whole column. In the home ribbon you will find an option of color conditional formatting. When you just click on it you will find all these different types of options. Now you can apply these data bars to it with a solid fill or a gradient fill and when you apply these data bars you can see that some of the data is being filled by a particular color. So if we just apply this green color data bar and if we just move through this column then you can see that the maximum value which is $275 is completely filled with green color while all the other values are filled slightly. But this is not very clear. So what we are going to do is just apply another type of color formatting which is color scales. And at the same time we are going to just clear up this data bars formatting that was earlier applied. So we can just clear the, all the rules then go to conditional formatting and apply this color scales option. So you can see that the value that is the minimum that is $1.99 is being colored with red color and uh, Actually 1.29 is the minimum value so it is being colored with a dark red color and $275 which is the maximum value it's been colored with the darkest green color and all the rest of the values are filled with the corresponding colors. So that's how you can organize your data and uh, make sure that whatever the data you have written is minimum value or its maximum value you can just differentiate between them. The next thing is how can you filter the data. So for that what you can do is just select this whole row and here you will find in the home tab itself an option of sort and filter. So you can just click on filter and as soon as you do that you will see that these kinds of arrows are available in front of you. These drop down arrows are now available. Okay now uh, you can see these kind of drop down arrows are available. So if you just select this. And you can see that the dif uh, different values have been selected over here. So if you just uncheck the select all and if you want to see only those items whose price is $1.29. So you can just click on it and select OK. Then you can see that only those items are visible whose price is exactly $1.29. Now if you want you can just... Um, Go to clear filter from units cost and all these filters would be cleared. And in the same way you can just apply these different kinds of filters like in the items tab you can just um, view only the pencils. You can just click on OK and you can see that uh, the different records only where the pencil is being stored like this. And if you want you can just sort it by more than one columns like pencil and desk and then click on OK, then only those values would be visible uh, which have the data as desk or pencil. If you want you can just clear all the filters like this and all these records would be visible once again. Another important feature that is available in Microsoft Excel is autofill feature. Suppose uh, this is a cell, this is an independent cell from the table and now we just supply some data to it. Suppose we write the year as 2019 and then in the very next row I write the data as 2020. Now this is something uh, worth noticing a pattern that I have incremented the next value by 1. So what I'm going to do is just shift and click on the arrow to select both of these columns. Then here on the lower right corner you will see that there is a black kind of a plus sign. So when you get this, you can just drag in downwards your uh, contents and you will see that your area or the value, whatever value you supplied is now incremented by one in each case. And that is the feature of autofill in Microsoft Excel that enables you to not only enter the data but only its pattern and it will automatically fill up the rest of the data. Now what is its importance? Its importance is over here. Suppose in my table I want to add a serial number column. Then what will I do is I just type in S N O and then instead of writing all these numbers from 1 to whatever the number of the records that are available what I will do is just I will type 1 then in the very next column I will type a 2 and then I will select both of these columns 
for uh, Microsoft Excel to understand the pattern and then I'm going to drag it all the way down to the last record. And you can see that it has automatically filled all of these records itself up to the number 36. Now you must be wondering what happens if we just provide a single value. For example, over here if I just provide a single value that is 2019 and then I just drag this data. Then what will it do? It will just copy the 2019 value to all of these cells. So if you want to copy the same data, then also you can use this autofill feature of Microsoft Excel. Otherwise, an important um, thing that you need to know is suppose if you type in Monday, that is the first day of the week and everyone knows that it is a universal thing. So what will Microsoft Excel do when we just drag it down is it will uh, just copy the next value itself like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and so on. Similarly, it does with the uh, name of the months like if you type in January and just drag in, then you can see that all of this data is being filled up itself like this. January, February, March, April, May and so on. So that is an important feature of Microsoft Excel that is the autofill feature. So that is all in today's Microsoft Excel tutorials video and I hope you all have enjoyed learning Microsoft Excel. Keep watching the YouTube channel Programming Knowledge. Till then, goodbye.